All right, so there's some government jobs out there that you are eligible for, and you probably are qualified for them, but you don't know what they are. Now I'm gonna be upfront and let you know the required experience. This is what you need to have. 12 months of office experience. One year, that's all you need. And before you tell me you don't have that, if you worked at a Walmart or a bank at, or at H&R Block, or maybe you worked at McDonald's and you worked on scheduling, and you worked on the inventory, and you actually did paperwork, that counts. That is office experience. Now you might be saying, well, I haven't had a job in a while, or maybe I haven't had a job at all, so I don't qualify. And I would say you're wrong, because volunteering experience counts. It doesn't matter if it's at your school, your church, your community. If you volunteer, say you help set up an event, say you were doing fundraising, you worked with forms. And if you did that in an office setting, an administrative type setting, you would be qualified. So what type of jobs are these? Let's get right into them. The first one is the 0203 HR assistant position. This job is with the Department of Justice. And it's usually kind of hard to get into HR, which is human resources, because they usually want you to have some sort of human resource experience. But not this job though. This job just wants office experience and only 12 months of it. The salary for this position is between $42,000 and $69,000 a year. If you are considering getting into human resources in the government, you have to understand that all HR experience is different. If you did it at the private sector, it's going to be different than the military. The military is gonna be different than the actual federal government. So most people, if they worked in the government for two, three, four, five years in a different series and they want to make the change, usually they have to take a pay cut in order to get into HR. So it's something to consider if it interests you. The next position is a 0335 computer clerk and assistant position. So unlike the 0200 job series, the 0300 is more welcoming <laughs> of different backgrounds. And I say that because generally they're looking at administrative experience. You can be qualified for a lot of the 0300 jobs, no matter where you actually worked at. So that's what attracts a lot of people into this job series. And also you'll find out that this is one of the biggest ones in the government. Okay, so the salary for this position is 37,000 to $70,000 a year. And this position is with the IRS and it's listed as a 12 month roster. When you see 12 month roster, that is a good thing because when you apply to this job announcement, they will periodically pick people. So you will be evaluated multiple times. So all throughout the year, there'll be some months where they pick up people, they interview them. Next month, they'll pick up some more people. This is the best value of your time because you're only applying once, but you're being considered multiple amount of times. The next position is a 0503 financial clerical and assistance. This is another position with that 12 month roster wording in the title, which is a good thing. This one's only at the GS5 level though. So if you wanted to get promoted above that, you would have to look at other positions in your office or outside of your agency. The salary is $37,000 to $60,000 a year. Now the first two positions I went over have a promotion ladder built into the position, meaning that after 12 months, you would get promoted. So you might come in as a GS5, you wait 12 months and then you're a GS7. And this is something to consider because not every position has a promotion ladder. And if you're in a position like the last one I just mentioned, if it does not have a promotion ladder, you're really gonna have to be more ambitious and proactive to look for your promotion. You're gonna have to go get your promotion. No one's gonna give it to you. If it is a ladder, then after 12 months, you will probably get it as long as your supervisor is okay with it and you've met all the standards. You'll probably just pretty much get it almost automatically. The next job you probably qualify for is the 0318 secretary position, which has a salary of $42,000 to $75,000 a year. Now I understand not everybody wants to be a secretary. And oftentimes when you even mention the word secretary, you think of someone running through the office with a cup of coffee or maybe warming up the boss's lunch. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. But it's not like that in every agency. And another thing, you can, you can use the secretary position to try to become an executive assistant. An executive assistant can actually be a GS-13, a GS-14, or even above in some cases. It's the direct assistant to the SES, to the executive. So a lot of people like those type of positions. Another thing that you're gonna have to consider, 
Now, when we're talking about government jobs, we're talking about three different services. We're talking about the accepted service, the competitive service, and the senior executive service. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you, you get to get in. Like, depending on your area, whatever opportunities are there, go ahead and try to pursue those opportunities and get hired. But what I would recommend people eventually is to, to try to get the competitive service. Because if you do that, you're gonna open up a lot more job opportunities and it's going to be easier for you to move, not just in your town or your state, but you can move across the country or even to another country because there's over 10,000 jobs out there for federal employees and half of them are competitive service. There are also many pathways for government jobs. So whether you're a veteran, disabled, Native American, Peace Corps member, whether you're a displaced employee, there's a lot of different categories that you could actually compete in to make getting a government job easier. But even if you do not qualify for any of those special pathways, that's okay. Do not let that discourage you. You can still apply for thousands of jobs that are open to the public. Now these can be more competitive, but you're gonna be fine as long as you have a strong resume and you're applying frequently. So why a government job? Why would you even consider it? Well, in one word, benefits. The benefits that the public sector offer, especially the federal government, are a lot better on average than anything the private sector can offer you. And if you wanna know more details about that, about some of the benefits that you could be receiving once you get hired, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.